All right, beloveds. Heart high. It's time to get into our yoga nest. So experience Hatha Yoga. Coming home to ourselves. Polishing the mirror. So feel your way into a comfortable seated posture. And get up as high as you need to so your knees organically drop low and the hip flexors don't have to work. Feel a great buoyancy in your sternum mirrored by a buoyancy in your hind skull. As we feel our way into our plumb line of ears, over shoulders, over hips, cheekbones, over collarbones, over pubic bone. So closing the eyes, as we become the proprietor of our senses. Drawing the eyes inward for a deep inner looking. The ears turn inward so that we can hear the body's whispers, hear the body's guidance, trust the wisdom of the soma, our body's guidance. Drawing the sense of touch to the interior. Moving into a felt sense of our beings. So often the world draws us out of ourselves. We begin to draw inward. Coming home and fully arriving at our own front door. And as we do, Perhaps the two palms press and the head bows to it all, every bit of it. And we take a moment to allow intention to rise to the surface. Where are we needed? Our physical body, emotional body, mental body. How can we arrive on our mat? as our own best friend and our practice is an expression of self-love, compassion, gratitude. The head bows to it all. We gather our intentions and then we cast our net a little bit wider and we include others. We practice on behalf of anyone and everyone who might benefit from a little bit of yoga in their lives right now. The head bows to it all, we gather it up and we lift it up and out in all directions on the wind of Om. Empty to fill. sacred intentions, your sankalpa, to each and every cell. Exhaling, may it be so. Release the arms low and long, still sitting tall in the saddle, feeling a seated tadasana. The eyes blink open, chin parallel to the floor. And let's release any tension, any gripping in the eyes. With the chin parallel to the floor, still feeling that lift from the hind skull, the lift from the breastplate, feeling a buoyancy about us, just let your eyes look straight out in front of you. And then without letting your gaze dip or rise, 
Just begin taking your gaze straight over to the right to three o'clock as if you had a clock in front of you going all the way to the east and then without letting the eyes dip or rise come straight across the horizon over towards nine o'clock all the way to the west. Make sure the breath is fluid and then once you've gone off the west shore come across the horizon back to the east Coming back to center, perhaps on an inhale. Exhale to the west. Last time, inhale to the east, moving slowly. Exhale, the eyes slowly move back to the west. And then inhale, back to center. Close your eyes, deep breath into the eye sockets. Deep breath out as if you were clearing any excess tension, any distortion. Sit tall in the saddle, eyes blink open. Inhale, the eyes come up to 12 o'clock all the way up to the north without moving the head. And then on an exhale, come straight down to 6 o'clock all the way south. Inhale, coming straight up to the north. Exhale straight down to the south. Move slowly. Try not to skip anything. As if your eyes were climbing a rope all the way up to 12 o'clock and then climbing that rope down to 6 o'clock. One last time. Slowly heading north and slowly traveling south with only the eyes. Stability, mobility. Inhale, coming to center. Exhale, close the eyes. And take a clearing breath. Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. Just pause here for a moment with your eyes closed. And feel them beginning to soften. Soft tongue, soft jaw, soft eyes, the space between the eyes. The skull cap begins to loosen its grip and we start to let go of all the planning and the strategizing and all the busyness that happens in the skull. Now I'm feeling your plumb line once again, ears over shoulders over hips, sitting tall, eyes blink open. We go into netriviamum. So keeping the head steady, eyes come up to 12 o'clock without moving the head and if you're and your head wants to move, just hold it steady with one hand. You come up to 12 o'clock and you slowly start tracing the second hand of a clock. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4, 5, 6, 7, and continue. Not speeding up father time. The hands are spinning fast enough as it is. And just go a couple times slowly. And if you notice that your eyes want to skip or ratchet, just use your right thumb perhaps to trace the second hand. And if you need to, use your second hand, your left hand, to steady the skull. And then after you have established the integrity of finding the outermost periphery, getting a nice stretch without strain, you start to increase the pace a little bit. Maybe marrying the breath to the movement. Inhale one quadrant, exhale another. And then when you next reach 12 o'clock, center, close, sweep out your eye sockets with your breath. Sitting tall on your mountaintop, eyes open. And we once again look up to 12 o'clock, straight up at 12, and we start to move anti-clockwise. 11, 10, 9, 8. So the eyes are open, and you're finding the outermost periphery without introducing any tension. Getting a nice stretch in the optic nerve. The eyes and the neck are simultaneously innervated. So we spend a lot of time at the computer screen, 
looking at the mobile, a lot of screen time, whatever the screen may be, introducing a lot of tension into the eyes. First couple of rounds are to establish the integrity of the circle. Just come into union with what the eyes are experiencing when asked to do this. And then slowly increasing the pace, getting a little bit of fluidity in it. Just sweeping out. Whenever you next reach 12 o'clock, center, close, clear your eye sockets with your breath. Inhale right into the center of the eye. Hold it, open the mouth, exhale, clear the eyes. Pause and notice. Soften, wherever you can, from skull to shoulders. And then keeping that softness about you, once again, the eyes blink open. Begin to reach wide rim to rim just enough to bring our fingertips back behind us. And you're just reaching for the earth with a nice external rotation of your upper arm bone, rolling the inner arm towards the outer. Fingertips down, thumbs out wide, posting off of the earth, and lifting up through the crown. So chin is still parallel to the floor, and you're posting off your fingers as if you could reach the heavens through the tips of your skull. And then draw your chin deep into the notch of the throat. Pull your floating ribs in, pull your belly button in. And then start to take your chin side to side across your chest. As if you had a windshield wiper extended from your chin. And you were simply clearing the view from the heart. Soften in the jaw. And let this movement go nice and wide. Feel what's happening from ear to ear along the base of the skull. Just loving on the back of the neck. And then steady at center. Release the hands to the lap. Take a clearing breath. And then chin rolls up parallel to the floor eyes on the horizon, shoulders roll up, back and down, and you feel now as you move into this where the hands and the arms want to be as you take the right ear towards the right shoulder. And then play with your hands and your arms. Remember, they're the portal into your neck. So find where they want to be. What is it that really allows you to create space between the shoulders and the ears? Spreads the collarbones away from the sternum, the shoulder heads away from the collarbone, Drawing the navel in, drawing the floating ribs in, lots of real estate in the low back. And then you feel with your hands, you get an external confirmation if you need to, to feel that your ears are indeed stacked. And then once you feel like, ah, okay, my ears are stacked, then you begin to take your sideways yes. And you get into the lateral neck and you feel whatever space you can cultivate from your left ear to your left shoulder perhaps all the way to your left thumb, all right? Explore your range and find something juicy and then hold that for a moment, just the pose, not the breath. See if you can loosen the grip. Last little bit of movement, nodding yes. And then chin to chest, face cast downward, pause at center for a clearing breath. Once again, spread the wings of your heart, anchor your shoulder blades to your spine as you roll the left ear to the left shoulder. And as you drop your shoulder blades down in towards your back pockets, once again, you yoke your arms and you feel, what can I do through my hands and my arms to get even more juicy into my felt sense of the neck, the lateral neck. And then you feel that your ears are indeed stacked. There's lots of space from the right ear to the right shoulder to the right thumb, yoking your way in, and then taking your sideways yes. Still dropping the shoulder blades into the back pocket, anchoring the navel to the spine, 
Let there be stability in thoracic and lumbar spine as you cultivate some mobility in the cervical. This is what love feels like to your neck. All right, find where you're most needed. Pause there for a breath or two, lean in. Last little bit of nodding. And then chin to chest, face cast downward. Pause for a clearing breath. Release your hands to your lap. Soften the arms. And then as if you were tracing infinity on your own breastplate, start tracing that sideways figure eight with your nose on your chest. So chin to chest. Slowly tracing infinity on your chest. Shoulder blades still anchored in your back pockets. And then let infinity go out on the floor in front of you. Changing your seated position however often you need to to stay comfortable. Continue tracing infinity out towards the wall in front of you. And then when you find your sideways figure eight on the wall in front of you, working your way chin parallel to the floor, eyes on the horizon, you're tracing infinity the entire time. Open it up wide, east to west. And really feel and hear the soundtrack of your neck, continuing to free up the eyes and the neck and those neural pathways. Continue tracing infinity on up the wall, on up the sky, on up the trees, all the way up on high. Whether you're in the ceiling or the sky, just find the end of your range of comfort and then steady the movement, hands to the breastplate, press in and pull down. Shoulders down, belly button in, and a few times, big jaw circles in each direction. And when you finish your jaw circles, really pull down on the sternum, feel that as the south end of the stretch, and arc a big rainbow in the sky up above you. Body stays steady, shoulders don't move, hips don't move, stability, mobility. Really opening up the neck cuff from jawline to collarbones, opening up thyroid and thymus. And then steady your movement, chin comes parallel to the floor. All ten fingers come back behind your neck. You shift a little bit forward and you just start to sweep from back to front. Sweeping the lymph towards the thoracic duct, right there where the collarbones meet. All ten fingers just sweeping. Staying nice and long in your neck, long in your spine. And then once you've swept it all down in the direction of the thoracic duct, cup your palms and rat tap tap. Move your lymph. Get all the way into the lymph of the groin of the arms. All throughout your chest. Down on into your belly, lower the lymph in the belly, down into the lymph of the groins. So really get into where the legs meet the body. And then come back through the belly and come back into the chest. And in Chinese medicine, the chest is where sadness and sorrow and grief may set up home. So just gentle tap, tap, tap. Clear it out. And then sweet fist as you get your thymus thump on. Tap, tap, tap your T-cells. Heighten your immunity. Steady your thump. Release your arms. Take a nice deep three-part breath. Let it go. Just close your eyes. Pause and notice how you feel. First part of our practice is slowing things down arriving in our felt sense of our being. And then we start to move into asana. Slowly coming up on to your knees. If you have a block, 
you may find it useful, but it's not a requirement. So coming up onto your knees, if you need to, get a blanket up under your knees. If you're practicing outside, the soft grass is very sweet. Yeah. Toes are curled under, yeah, it'll heighten your balance and give you a little bit more sure-footedness. We'll begin by taking the right foot, the inside edge of the foot parallel to the outside edge of the mat. The right heel intersects the left knee. The right hand is going to be on the right thigh, or if you want to, if you have a block and want to use it, the block is right there beneath the outside strike, the, the, actually the inside strike of your right thigh. So it's in front of you, but start with your hand on your knee. Left arm is long alongside your body. And I want you to start feel the hips peeling back towards the midline behind you. So the outer edges of the hips are moving towards the midline of the buttocks, right? The right knee is tracking the pinky toe part of the right foot. On an inhalation, circle your left arm up. Exhale, drop the shoulder and the girdle. You really want to create lots of space between the left shoulder and the left ear. Chronogize your left arm. And really let it be dynamic. Reach up through your fingertips. Keep working that right knee towards the pinky edge of your right foot. Post off of your left knee and start to yoke the length of your left side. Open up your left waist, ground and lift, and ground and lift, and ground and lift. Get as long as you can in the left side. Pull your floating ribs in, pull your belly button in. So you're getting very narrow front to back so you can come out through the top, right? And then on an inhalation, look up, raise the roof, lift the sky, and on an exhalation, as if between two sheets of glass, hinge over to the right. You can slide down onto that right forearm or the hand come onto the block beneath your right shoulder if you're using a block. Find what's best for your body. If you're using your right hand on your right thigh, it might be nice to pay attention to what your right arm is doing to keep opening the top right quadrant of your chest. And then gazing skyward into the left, you decide, do I want to bend my left elbow and hold the base of my skull and move from the left elbow and take that left elbow back towards the wall behind you, back towards the wall behind you. And keep exploring as if, stay as you are, keep exploring as if you could put yourself in a toaster. And so you really want to feel like this right lung is stacking beneath the left lung. Yeah. Beautiful. So keep bringing that right lung skyward and skyward and skyward. And then if you don't have your left elbow bent to hold your head, you reach long through that left arm in such a way that the pinky side of the hand cuts the floor and you feel that left shoulder blade moving away from the midline. Whatever it is you're doing, post off your points of contact. The last couple of breaths here. Just really feel the opening from the outside strike of your left hip, lateral edge, diaphragm, ribs, shoulder, Deep breath in, look for those fingertips if your arm is extended, deep breath out, and on the inhalation, left arm comes back up, 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 exhale as you blossom out. So we come out of the practice with a little bit, that pose with a little bit more length than we went in. As you come out, deep breath in, deeper breath out. Now if you're holding a block, or if you're using a block, you'll take it in your left hand. But once again, don't feel obliged. I'm going to scoot a little forward. Your right leg is going to go long. You're going to kick out through your right heel, as if you're taking Padottanasana legs, as if you were going to go into a forward fold. So let your right heel go a little bit further out than your big toes. So you're slightly pigeon-toed with your right leg, okay? And then stack your bones, shoulders over hips, over knee. And then on the inhalation, circle your right arm up. Exhale, drop the shoulder and the girdle. Now find the diagonal from your left knee across your body all the way out through your right fingertips. So ground and lift and ground and lift and ground and lift. That union of opposites that is Hatha Yoga. And on the inhalation, look up, lift up, reach up. And on the exhalation, coming over to the left. If you have your hand on a block, let your fingertips face the back edge of your mat, not the side edge, the back edge of your mat, and you get a down dog hand on that block. Post off of the block on the tall end to initially find the arc of your left waist. To really find the arch of your body, gazing skyward into the right, stacking your left lung beneath your right lung, really finding the arch of the right leg, the arch of the left waist, 
posting off of these points of contact to open up the lateral edge of your body. And then you can come down on a shorter edge of the block, post off of your down dog hand on a shorter edge of the block and really go for a little bit more length. So you start finding your arches, the arch of the right leg, the arch of the left waist, and then you find the length all the way from the outside strike of the right ankle. Yeah, beautiful. The arch is active in the right foot by pushing like mad through the outside strike of the right foot, finding the arch all the way in the right leg. Beautiful. Yeah, lengthening, lengthening, lengthening all the way out through the right fingertips. Once again, the pinky edge of the hand cutting the ground, bringing that left lung skyward, left lung skyward. If your neck allows, look for your right fingertips. Really lengthen out, lengthen out. Mm, feel that openness in the lateral body. Breathe into it. And your next inhalation, right arm brings you up. And exhale as you blossom out. Well done. And you're going to slide that right knee in and come back to center. If you need to get off your knees, you just have to sit back on your heels, pause for a moment, close the eyes, feel your lateral body beginning to open up. And then once the mud is settled, we feel on solid ground, we come back up onto our knees for second side. And from here, you're going to bring your left foot to the earth. Inside strike of the left foot, flush with the side edge of your mat, the heel intersecting the knee. So left heel intersecting right knee. If you're using a block, you take it to the, just in front of the inside of your left thigh. So ultimately you'll end up with your hand on it beneath your shoulder, but you don't have to use a block. Left hand on the left thigh, encouraging that external rotation of the left thigh. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, shoulder down deep in the girdle. Now, once again, we start to get narrow front to back. We post off of that right knee to lift up through the right arm. All right, so ground and lift. Exhale to ground, inhale to lift. Get as long as you can in your right waist. Open up, open up, open up. Climb, climb, climb beyond previous limitations. Look up, lift up, and then exhaling out and over to the left. So there's really this arc happening in the left waist. We're coming up and over. And then we're bringing that left lung skyward, pushing that left knee back. And it's Hatha Yoga, right? You give a little, you lose a little. You negotiate. You find a way to use that left arm that keeps the top left quadrant of the chest open. Whether you're using your forearm on the thigh or your hand on the block. Do it in a way that is mindful of the openness that you previously cultivated in neck and shoulders. And then you just start to stack your bones. And you make sure that you're really working that left knee back towards the pinky side of the foot. And that left lung skyward. And you say, okay, is my neck happy? Do I have permission to be here? If not, you bend the elbow and you support the base of the skull just around the left ear area and you lead with the elbow. And that right elbow is moving skyward and to the left. And that left lung is coming and that left knee is moving back. And you just keep negotiating and you keep negotiating, right? And then for those of you who are working with an extended right arm, lengthen out, pinky edge of the hand towards the floor, arm alongside the ear as best you can left lung is skyward last couple of breaths here posting off of your right knee finding the length of your right waist peeling open your lateral body if you can look for the right fingertips reach 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 and then on an inhalation right arm brings you up exhale as you blossom out take a moment feel And then if you're using a block, it goes into the right hand, fingertips towards the front edge of your mat. On the inhalation, circle up your left arm. 
Exhale, drop the shoulder and the girdle. Keep using your rootedness in your left foot to have the knee tracking the pinky edge of the foot. Try not to let that knee collapse inward. You're twisting the column if you do. So keep your knee stacked over your heel. Find the diagonal, lengthen, 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 lengthen. Look up, lift up, reach up, and then arcing over to the right. Stay on the tall side of the block initially, up underneath your right shoulder, post off of it, or perhaps you're on claws, finding the arc, lengthening, 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 and then going on to a shorter edge of the block as you reach out. Okay, so you've gone this far and you say to yourself, hey man, that's not what she did a minute ago. So, inhale, come up, 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 up. Exhale, blossom out with that left arm. Yeah. Take a clearing breath. Acknowledge that Megan is tragically human and playfully so. And then let that left leg go long. Take your heel wider than your big toe. Go pigeon toe with that left leg. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, that's more like it. I've caught up with you. All right, I'm slow, but I get there, y'all. <laughs> All right, so left leg is long. You're back in position. Well, I need my foot on the mat. Yep, yep. And so, right arm circle, uh, left arm circles up. Ta -ta -da! Drop the shoulder and the girdle. Inhale, lengthen, 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 lengthen. And exhale, come out and over. Start on the tall end. Yeah, this is starting to feel a little bit more expansive. Right lung skyward. And then we go down to the shorter end of the block. On the shorter edge, we really can get longer, longer, longer. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Beautiful. Now really, posting off the outside strike of your left heel, your left ankle, the outside strike of your left foot to activate the arch of your left foot. The arch of your left foot activates into the arch of your left leg, activates into the arch of the pelvis, the arch of the right waist. We lengthen, 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 lengthen. Look out to your left fingers. Reach, 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 reach. Oh, it's magically delicious. And then on an inhalation, come up. Exhale, blossom out. Yep. Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. Thanks for your patience. Come on to both knees. And from both knees, if you need to, take a break. I know you all know where the pause button is on your video. So you'll take a break, you'll settle in, you'll let your knees do what they need to do, you'll lengthen out through your knees, you work up whatever uh, comfort you need for yourself, however you need it, to get back out on the field on your knees. So back on your knees, good people. Toes curled under once again, because this might be more comfortable. And then from here, we're just gonna start swimming. Lead with your arm as you reach back into a backstroke, as if your right hand were finding your right heel. Lead with your left arm. Left hand looks for left heel. And continue, just stroking, leading with the shoulder. So feel this. Eyes follow hands. Just opening up the breastplate, opening up the chest. Last little bit of backstroke. One more time. The right hand looks back for right heel. Left hand looks back for left heel. Mm. And then come back to center uncurl your toes and push back into the pose of a child. You can keep this orientation or you can reorient towards the head of your mat. We're going to end up back oriented towards the head of our mat for our Surya Namaskaram. Do what works for you right now as you back into child's pose. Make sure that your knees are a distance apart that is absolutely comfortable for your body. And if you have somebody at home that can take a seat low down on your sacrum to really help you get into your child's pose a little more deeply and it's safe for you and your knees. See how that feels? You want them to get nice and low down. 
breathing in to wherever you feel the shape the most. Loving on your child's pose. And then slowly letting your balasana, your child's pose, transform into your down dog. Let it be organic as you shape shift into down dog, pedal in place, do whatever it is your dog asks of you. So, maybe one knee bends, the opposite heel dials. As one knee bends, say your right knee bends, your left heel goes down into the earth. Doesn't bend all the way, just a gentle bend. Whatever it is your body wants to do. Last little bit of yoking out a nice long down dog. And then slowly walk your feet halfway to your hands and as you walk halfway to your hands you come up on fingertips come up on claws back of the neck is long and you're looking to the wall behind you or the woods behind you release your skull from your spine really hang heavy and then Allow your hands to walk back to your feet and you just ragdoll forward into Uttanasana. Continuing to look back between your knees to release your skull from your spine. And take a few breaths leaning into your exhalation to empty the shoulders. Just let go of whatever you've been carrying. Empty arms, empty shoulders empty skull, soft belly, all right, and then with your head hanging low, slowly begin to roll up vertebra by vertebra, bone by bone, shoulders roll up back and down and the head is the last to rise. Pause at the top, chin parallel to the floor, deep breath in, deep breath out, shake it off, shake it loose, shake it down and walk to the head of your mat, feel your way onto your mountaintop, Samastiti. On the inhalation, the two palms press, exhale, the head bows to your Sankalpa, just take a moment here, remember your sacred intentions. Please let them be your guide, guided by your sacred intentions, your sankalpa, the internal whispers, the infinite wisdom within. My words are far in the distance behind all of that. Exhale to ground through the roots from your feet. Now on the inhalation, lock your thumbs, reach your branches long out in front of you and tall up above you. Maybe a little back bend, and on the exhalation, come into your forward fold. Whether you swan dive, whether you come through the midline, that's between you and your low back. Inside edges of the feet parallel to one another when you get there. Make sure that your big toes are hugging the midline. And then knees bend, fingers outside toes. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, left knee grounds. Go nice and deep in your lunge, chin to chest. So go into a gentle Jalandhara Bandha. So your chin's not, your head's not hanging. Your chin is gently drawing into the notch of your throat. Your shoulders are moving away from your ears. And with each exhalation, you're going a little bit deeper in your lunge, getting your belly into your thigh, your chest into your thigh, and then really trying the best you can to isolate your breath from right hip to right shoulder as we clear stagnation from the ascending colon, the liver, the gallbladder. Nice big belly breathing. And then stay deep in your lunge and simply lift your gaze on an inhalation. Inhaling, come into full extension, 
back body is descending, front body is ascending. So you really want to feel that your superhero cape is coming down your back and your sternum is lifting. So there's this sweet union of opposites that is Hatha Yoga. You're looking towards your hairline or the ceiling for a last inhalation and on the exhalation to your down dog. Exhaling into your dog, a breath or two to clean the slate. And then on the inhalation, come up on the ball edge of the feet, shifting your weight forward, take your knees to the earth, keep your pelvis raised, shift your weight forward, take your chest and chin to the earth, keeping your pelvis raised. Elbows hugging toward the sides of your body. Bring your awareness to the space between your shoulder blades and sink your heart down into the earth. Really let her be held by the earth. And as you sink your heart into the earth, just feel that point of contact and feel the earth washing your heart clean. Elbows continue to hug the side body. And now press into your palms, shift your weight forward, sink your tail, inhale up into a baby cobra. And now there's no pressure on the palms. You're just really feeling where the belly meets the earth now, lengthening out through your toes, taking your upper buttocks tissue towards your heels, continuing to have the back body move towards the heels and the sternum move towards the chin as you breathe where the belly meets the earth. And you let the belly be washed clean. Be incredibly generous with your breath here. Big belly breathing. And then keeping those elbows hugging in line with the shoulders and the wrist. On an exhalation, move back into down dog, however you get there. Take a breath in your dog to arrive. On an inhalation, left foot forward. You can drop that right knee down and bring that left foot forward, however you do it. It doesn't have to be pretty. We're not graded on entrance and exit. Lay your foundation so that your bones are stacked. You can go nice and deep in the lunge of your left leg and the knee doesn't hyperextend beyond the ankle. Sink your lunge. Gentle Jalandhara Bandha, chin into the chest, gently lifting, belly to thigh, chest to thigh, isolating Dirga Swasam from your left hip to your left shoulder. Clearing descending colon, clearing the pancreas, the spleen, the stomach, the heart. Back of the neck is long, lots of space from the base of your skull to the base of your neck. And then from deep in the basement of your lunge, on an inhalation, simply lift your gaze. Opening the front line of your spine, unzipping from your chin to your sternum. Shoulders back, gazing towards your hairline or the sky. One last inhalation. And on the exhalation, look down at your left foot as you bring your right foot to join it. Coming into your forward fold, taking however many breaths you need to, to find your way into a forward fold that has a hand arm position that releases something from your neck and shoulders. Maybe grabbing hold of the backs of the thighs, shoulders away from the ears, head hanging freely from the neck. A breath or two here to really feel your way into the hamstrings shifting your weight a little bit more towards the ball ledge, the ball mound. And then activating the arches of your feet by pressing through the four corners of your feet, lifting and spreading your toes, arms back like wings. Now this is where you will find some schools of yoga. Take the arms out in front of you. I like to have the arms back behind you with a nice external rotation of the shoulders. So opening your palms, if anything, out towards the wall beyond you, just to really allow you to lead from your heart. Back body is moving towards the wall behind you. Arms out in front of you puts about 30 pounds more pressure on your low back. And if you have any low back issues, you don't want to bother them, right? We're not here to add to it. And on an inhalation, pressing through the four corners of your feet, bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale, look up. Lift up, reach up, nice flat back, beautiful. Lifting up, 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 full extension. Exhale as you swan day, as, as you come to standing. Come to standing, Samastiti. Yeah, there you go. 
Pause in Samastiti. Take a clearing breath. And back to your mountain top. Standing tall, two palms press, head bows. Your drishti is your fingertips. Exhale. On the inhalation, locking your thumb, reaching your branches long and tall, opening the front line. Try not to head, let your head go further back than your arms. There you go. Inhale, lift your sternum, 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 sternum. Exhale, forward fold. Knees bend, fingers outside, toes. Inhale, your right leg back. Exhale, right knee grounds. Inhale, look up. Exhale to your dog. A breath in your dog. Inhale, come up on the ball edge of your feet. Exhale, shift your weight forward, knees, chest, and chin to the earth. Inhale, baby cobra. Lifting up into your baby cobra for an inhalation. Exhale to your dog. Inhale, right foot forward. Exhaling, left knee grounds. Go nice and deep in your lunge. Inhale, look up. Exhale, back foot joins the front. A breath or two in your forward fold. Activate the arches. Spread your wings. Inhale, coming up with a nice flat back. Full extension at the top of the inhalation. Reach up, 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 up. Exhale, two palms press home to the heart. Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. Inhale, open the front line. All the way up into full extension, opening the front line of your spine. Exhale, take your bow, opening the back line. All the way down, fingers outside toes, knees bend. Inhale, left leg back. Exhale, left knee grounds. Now from here, you decide. Do you want to bring your arms alongside your ears and come up into your monkey? Or do you want to do it without arms? If so, arms come alongside your ears, hook your thumbs, and open up. Try not to let the head go back more than the arms. Opening up skyward. Inhale, opening up, opening up, opening up. Stay here. Exhale, sink your lunge. Inhale. Exhale. If your neck allows, take your gaze skyward. Last little bit of feeling your way into full extension. Exhale as you lengthen and lower to your dog. Pause in your dog. And then inhale, come up on the ball edge of the feet. Exhale, shift your weight forward, knees, chest, and chin to earth. Sink your pelvis, lift your heart, inhale into your cobra, and stay here for several breaths in your cobra. Lengthen out through your toes behind you, uncurl your toes, get nice and long. So really lengthening your legs out of your hips, taking your upper buttocks tissue towards your heels. The legs as close together as your body comfortably allows, and you're bringing those elbows towards one another. See if you can slide your hands a little bit further back towards your waist here. Beautiful. And then really feel what it's like to squeeze the penny between your shoulder blades. And as your shoulder blades move towards the spine and back towards your upper buttocks tissue, the collarbones spread open on the front, lift your gaze, lift your chin, lift a victorious heart. Several breaths here into the upper thoracic spine, the neck and the shoulders. Last little bit of really exploring your cobra. Deep breath into an ever expansive heart. Inhale, exhale your dog. Take a clearing breath. Shoulders away from the ears. Back of the neck is long. Looking towards the wall between your legs. On an inhalation, left foot forward. Keep inchworming your left foot forward and forward and forward until you can get into a nice deep lunge. Take time to lay your foundation, beloveds. It's so very important that you build your house on a rock. 
and bless their heart, my model here, who's so generously stuck in quarantine with me, might feel picked on, but she's not. I'm just going to say, make sure you don't have a sickle in your back foot. Ultimately, you want to feel that the inside strike of the foot is in line with the outside edge of the mat. These are just little details, but I hope you practice for the rest of your life. And so we don't want to cultivate these habits, right? So from a nice deep foundation, maybe the arms come alongside the ears. You hook your thumbs into a butterfly shadow and you let that cobra action come out once again. So really lifting from the heart as you open up full extension, arms alongside the ears, back of the neck is long and you come into full extension skyward. Open up, open up, open up. Exhale, sink the lunge of your left leg, go into your lunge. And then you want to feel that right hip coming forward, left hip moving back and hugging the midline as if your hips were squared off with the monkey bars in front of you. Arms moving back and back and back. Try not to let the head go further back than the arms. Last little bit of squaring that right hip forward, pulling that left hip back, sinking nice and deep into the lunge with your exhalation. Lifting through the heart and arms on the inhalation, that union of opposites. And then on an exhalation, lengthen and lower all the way down back into your dog. Feeling your way back into your dog. And let it be a nice long dog. So, really feeling maybe that your hands are opening up a little bit so there's no crease in your wrist. The middle left finger is at 10 o'clock. The middle right finger is at 2 o'clock. You want to feel there's lots of space between your shoulders and your ears. If you have a tendency to hyper, have hypermobility in your elbows, you really load the outside edge of the wrist, the pinky side of the hand. And then you just want to feel this, the wrists are on the same plane. Bring your left wrist forward. Yeah, there you go. So. You want the heels of the wrist on the same plane, and you ultimately want the heels of the feet on the same plane. And then you just want to take your heart back towards your thighs. And take your heart back towards your thighs. Keep your hands in place, and just keep taking your heart back towards your thighs, lifting your kneecaps. Beautiful. The last little bit of just giving the highest honor to the shape of down dog that your body can offer. Whatever it is, let it be plenty. And then roll forward into high plank. And as you roll forward into high plank, feel that your head is not hanging from your neck. Your head is actually in line with the rest of your spine. Yeah. And the back of the neck is long, and you're gazing slightly out in front of you, slightly out in front of the fingertips. Lots of space from the base of the skull to the base of the neck, and the head is just in line with the rest of the spine. Belly button is lifted, kneecaps are lifted, the outer edges of the shoulders are moving back towards the outer edge of your waist. There's ever so slight bend in your elbows, so we're not really muscling our way into it from the upper body, we're feeling our way into it from the core. And continuously try not to let that head hang. Yeah, beautiful. Last little bit. Feel your length and your strength, beloveds. Now's the time. This is the place. We're long and we're strong. And then keep the length and the strength of your plank and slowly bend your elbows and let your elbows replace your palms. So we're coming into a forearm plank. Forearm plank. We're still up in our plank. We're just letting our elbows replace our palms. Yep, there you go. That's it. Bows and toes. <laughs> Swivel the ball edge of your feet back and back and back. Yeah, beautiful. Head's still in line with the rest of the spine. And your forearms are ultimately parallel to one another. Beautiful. And now the palms of the elbows are really pressing down as the palms of the hands were earlier. Heads in line with the rest of the spine. You feel your length and your strength. You've got this. Last couple of breaths. Hug the abdominals to the bone. And then slowly lower your belly down. Stay on your elbows. Stay on your forearms. Lift your gaze. And begin to move your way into your sphinx pose. So this is when you really want to press through the forearms, push the elbows down as if you were pushing the sticky mat back towards your hips. And as you push your forearms down and push your elbows back, you feel the sternum coming forward. Yeah, beautiful. So you're really pushing off, pushing off, pushing back as if you were climbing out of yourself. 
shoulders down, 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 outside edges of the shoulders moving back, 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 chin parallel to the floor. Beautiful. And then you let this rising happen from your sternum. As your shoulder blades move down your back, your upper buttock tissue moves out through your heels, your navel is hugging your spine, so you're not in your low back. And just feel your way into whatever sphinx is there for you. But you're ultimately pressing through those forearms, through the palms of the elbows, to take your back body back and your front body forward and up. And there's this phoenix rising up out of the ashes, a victorious heart. Last little bit here. Now, if you have absolute permission from your low back, you can slowly start to straighten your arms ever so slightly, as long as you don't get hemmed. So keep your palms down, keep them just as they are, and just slowly start to straighten. Yes, yes. Lift your chin, chin parallel to the floor. That's it. Now the most important thing when you do this is that your shoulders are moving back and down and back and down and back and down. You want your palms at least shoulder width apart, right? So your hands are in line with your elbows or in line with your shoulders. You've got a nice solid foundation to give you some space. Last little bit of the sternum rising and the shoulder blades descending. Yeah. And then if your arms are extended, come back down onto your forearms. Pause there for a moment. If your hands are more narrow than your elbows, open your hands up a little bit. Let them go a little bit wider. And then really feel the pressing from your elbow through your forearm to the palms of your hands. Press into that as if you were pulling your body forward. And it's almost like you're dead weight. And you're pulling your body forward, pulling your body forward, pulling your body forward to lay the front line of your spine down very slowly. Pushing those elbows back, laying your spine down. Thoracic spine comes from the bottom to the top, pushing down through those forearms, just laying your spine down like a strand of pearls. Beautiful. Yeah. So there's this delicious moment of traction that's available. Create space between each of the vertebrae. You take 10,000 years to lay your spine down. When you do come down, stack your palms one on top of the other beneath your forehead and rest your forehead in line with the rest of your spine on stacked palms. Take the time for this to be magically de delicious. Lengthening, 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 lowering down, forehead to palms. Let your elbows go wide. Elbows open out wide. And you just lay your body down. Belly Shavasana. Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. Wag your tail here. And just move energy. Anything that may be hemmed up within you, just wag, wag, wag it out. And as you wag your tail and really move energy, we feel a clearing perhaps, right? Prana, chi, life. There's a little more free to flow through us. Breathe into all of that. And then from here, I invite you to take your right arm long overhead. Left hand slides up underneath your left shoulder. And you're gonna roll over onto your right side. And as you roll over onto your right side, let your right knee bend ever so slightly to give you a little bit of balance. Just a slight bend in your right knee and reach back and grab hold of your left ankle, your left shin, or a pant leg if you're wearing them, whatever you're allowed to grab, whatever your body freely gives you, you grab that. If you have the good fortune of grabbing an ankle, flex up through the heel. This protects the knee a little bit. And then bring your buttock forward. Bring your buttock forward as you take your thigh back. So I really want you to feel your buttock coming into the body and you're going to feel your way into the belly of that left calf. Feeling your way into the belly of the left calf and as you feel your way into uh, the left thigh rather in the left quadricep, as you feel your way into the left quad, feel it tracking up through the inner left hip and down through the inner left knee and be mindful. Do you have permission from your knee to be here? And if you don't, you back off, right? You, you take, uh, if you have the ankles, you take the toes, you take a pant leg. 
You may find that starting with that left knee high above the hip is easier and then slowly lowering it down to come into the height of the hip if your body allows, that's ideal. The knee in line with the hip. Last little bit of peeling open that left quad, using your breath, be sweet, be generous. And then release the foot that you've caught and roll over bellyward. And then let your left arm go long, right hand comes underneath your right shoulder and you roll onto the left side. Gentle bend in your left knee and you reach back and grab hold of whatever you can in the right leg. Bring your buttock forward as you take your right thigh back, starting to get into the belly of the right quad. So this is a gentle little side bow and you see what your permission, your knees give you permission to do you honor the body's limitations. And then again, see if you can track your way to origin and insertion of that right quad. So coming up through the inside strike of the right hip bone, coming down through the inside strike of the right knee where quadricep holds the patella in place. Last little bit of big breathing into the belly of the quad, right in the middle of the thigh. And then release back bellyward. And as you release back bellyward, reach back now and grab hold of both ankles, both shins, Whatever you're able, forehead is to the earth. And again, if you can, you flex up through the heels to protect your knees, if you can. Don't force anything. And then, one leg at a time, just lift that thigh up and lengthen out through the knee. Just claim the length of your thighs. And initially, you, you let your thighs be as close together as you can, your knees as close together as you can, and initially, Stay well grounded through the thighs, well grounded through the thighs as you lengthen out through the knees, you lengthen out through the crown of the head, you pull the navel towards the spine, you take the upper buttocks tissue towards the heels and you let your cobra slowly come out. So it's a cobra bow, forehead rolls skyward, nose, chin. So it's a grounded bow and you push your heels away from your head. Really let it come out. Keep your thighs grounded. Push your heels from your head. Push your heels from your head. Feel your collarbone spreading open. Shoulder blades hugging the spine. And then if you have absolute permission from your low back to lift your thighs and come into your full bow, lift your thighs and come into your full bow. Lifting both halves of the body, ultimately letting your head and your feet be on the same plane up above you. Lifting the thighs, lifting the heart. Keep straightening your legs. Feel your way into the pose. And then for those of you who like to, roll over into your side bow for a few breaths. As you feel your way into your side bow, really let your head go back. It's okay. Some days are like that. I think that. I'm on a little hill. Keep it real. <laughs> Here we go. So all we can do is keep it real, beloveds. Don't force anything. Don't force anything on any given day because if you are, it's no longer yoga. Alright, last little bat, bit back into your full bow. Coming back into honoring the integrity of the shape of Dhanurasana. Opening from chin to sternum to pubic bone to knees. And then slowly lower down and push back into the pose of a child. Taking a bow to your ability to bend over backwards. And then if it's not already so, let your knees open a little bit wider. Knees are a little bit wider than your hips. 
so from your knees to your feet is making a little bit of a diamond, a half of a diamond behind you. And then grab the outside edges of your sticky mat for traction and pull onto your sticky, push it away from you and really back into yourself for a last breath or two. Back in, back in, back in. Take your sitting bones towards your heels. Last little bit of breathing into the kidney band from your bottom ribs to your waistband. And then release that. Palms under your shoulders. And slowly roll up bone by bone. Chin to chest. Slowly rolling up. Shoulders roll up, back and down. Head's the last to rise. Pause at the top. And then take a breath. Notice, feel. And you begin to organize your legs out in front of you in a diamond pose. And let it be a really soft diamond. And then you check in here and you feel diamond pose. Does this feel like a good forward fold? Or do I want to take those legs full extension into Paschimottanasana, into full forward fold? You can take them wide into a straddle or you can have them together. So with the legs nice and wide, it's a different pose than your legs together. So Paschimottanasana, just to share with you, Paschimottanasana, with those two legs together out in front of you, is going to be a bit more about your hamstrings. Diamond pose is going to be a bit more about your low back. Maybe some into the hips, but a bit more about your low back. And then there's Baddha Konasana, bringing your heels all the way up. This is all about hips, maybe a little bit of low back, but really it's a hip song. So we go into our hips, we go into our low back, we go into our hamstrings. You decide. Or, as we saw a moment ago, if you let your legs go wide, we go into adductors, into a forward fold here. So, check them out. Do your best Goldilocks and ask your body. Or just feel your way. You know, what, what is it, where is it you're needed right now? And set up for that, okay? And then as you set up for that, scoop away the flesh from the sitting bones. Ground well. Post off your points of contact. Take your fingertips down to the earth to claim the length of your spine. So whatever it is you're doing, whatever your forward fold may be, you're going to begin posting off with your fingertips behind you to encourage the length of your spine. So whatever your position may be, claim the length of your spine. And then from a fully lengthened spine, begin to hinge from where the legs meet the body. So ultimately in Hatha Yoga, the forward folds come from where the legs meet the body. So we really just want to look like we swallowed a yardstick so we don't compromise L5S1. Right. So lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Whenever you feel your back starting to round, that's where you bow your head and let whatever you've got be plenty. Okay. So be kind, be gentle, be sweet to that sacred juncture of L5S1. Yeah. Feeling your way slowly to the end of the road. And then whenever you get there, soften. Take whatever hand arm position is mindful, is conscious, and is chosen as we come into our last forward fold of our practice. Taking a bow to asana. So you will find that if your body is feeling a little bit lethargic, maybe a little bit low spirits, your back bends are a really nice way to elevate the mood. And then the forward bends are a nice way to soften the nervous system. So one lifts our spirits. The other softens, smooths our feathers. These two are really nice together. Last little bit of softening in. 
finding a few rounds of Dirgaswasam, your three-part breathing to smooth out the nervous system. And then slowly begin rolling out, coming out in the way that feels most intelligent to your body in this moment. And just pause at the top. Notice, feel. And then allow your body to show you the shape that it wants to take for the stillness and the silence of Shavasana. Traditional Shavasana would be to reach nice and long out through the legs, nice and long out through the arms. Traditional Shavasana would have you really reach your fingers down towards your toes, taking the shoulders away from the ears and really lengthening out through the arms, lengthening out through the legs, allowing your arms and legs to find the distance that they want to be from the body. And they say that 45 degrees with the arms straight out, anything beyond that can excite the nervous system. So you want to come down, actually 90 degrees excites the nervous system, come down to about 45. I mean, it doesn't work for your body, it doesn't work, right? You find what works. But in general, they, then the others, say that 90 degrees or less, which is ideal, but your body might find it comfortable to put your hands in the air. Find what works for you. And then imagine I'm coming along and sliding your superhero cape down your back because that's what love feels like, pushing your shoulder heads down, spilling your frontal hip bones backwards. Any last little adjustment to tuck yourselves in. Cultivate some supreme comfort in stillness. And I recommend you stay in Shavasana anywhere between five and 15 minutes. Eyes closed to the outside world as you dive deep within and let your awareness rest on your breath. Feeling the rhythmic lullaby of your breath. Feeling life choosing you with each spontaneous inhalation. And as your awareness rests on your breath, everything else dissolves. Your body dissolves into whatever is beneath it. You begin to merge with the unified field. We allow for whatever sounds, whatever feelings, whatever's there has absolute permission to be there. We don't give it any attention. We just rest within the breath and allow our body the sacred stillness. I bathe you in the closing prayer for world peace and leave you to penetrate the depths of Shavasana. Samasta Sukino 
Avantu Om Shanti 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 May all beings in all worlds be happy and free Om Peace Peace Peace. Jai Shri Satguru Maharaj Ki. Jai. Peace to all, life to all, love to all. Namaste.